Hello, my name is Janice B. Gordon, and this is Scale Your Sales Podcast. Welcome to Scale Your Sales Podcast, listed as number nine of 43 best podcasts for every sales professional. I am Janice B. Gordon, the customer growth expert, recommended by LinkedIn Sales as one of 15 innovating sales influencers to follow. In this episode of Scale Your Sales podcast, I speak to a CEO that has worked her, herself up from sales roles, marketing, um, CMO, CRO into the CEO role. So we talk about what are the real differences and, and changes and how she's very much got a um, a continuous learning uh, approach to to whatever she she does. We also talk about enhanced security posture, and this is related to the organisation that she runs. Real time monitoring alert to help their partners and customers more effectively identify and remedy um, security risks. There's so much in this this conversation. You're you're going to love it. My next guest is CEO of LionGuard, the leader in configuration, change detection and response, providing MSPs and IT executives with the most effective way to provide IT governance and cyber security mitigation. She is the native leader with over two decades of experience growing MSPs and technology companies with an excellent track record of success. Previously to joining LineGuard, was CEO of the US nation's largest cybersecurity focus MSPs locally. She also spent nine years leading star to star communications and ultimately selling that business to Sang Goma in 2021. Welcome to Scale Your Sales podcast, Michelle Acardi. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on, Janet. Uh, well, it's been an absolute pleasure reading all about you and what you do so i'm going to get straight into it and let's talk about the importance and the difference between transactional selling and relationship selling a lot of people think they're doing relationships selling so let's just clear that up tell us what oh, your thoughts are absolutely so uh transactional selling has its place for low cost um, solutions that essentially don't need a lot of explanation. Um, so, you know, if it can be transacted uh, come to marketplace without a salesperson or with a salesperson, uh, essentially, hey, I'm going to show you the demo and then transact here and then I'm on to the next. The reality is actual sales, though, dunkiness of solution or relationship selling. Uh, and from, from my perspective, um, in the MSP space that we sell into, um, relationship, relationship selling is absolutely critical um, and helping a solution selling, but making sure that you really are fitting the need of the particular customer that you're serving. Um, and that's something that transactional sales really depends on the customer to have done that research ahead of time to say, hey, this fits. Where solution selling is really about understanding the customer better and helping them find the right solution that meets their particular need. I would imagine in the security space, in cyber security, uh, it's all about trust. And so it's got to be all about relationship. And you must be constantly educating because it's the te technology has been developed all the time, then you've got to sidestep as well. So I would imagine that relationship is the most, more almost more important than the technology. The relationship is the most important thing to to your. Oh, absolutely, industry. things things are changing very quickly, and so 
for us, I mean, obviously that's what Lion Guard specializes in. Uh, we do configuration change detection and response and help customers understand their cyber posture. So a relationship first uh, and foremost with the MSPs that we serve them with getting a better handle around this for all their customers and then taking that better individualized customer and develop giving making them the trusted advisor very very important uh, uh, I don't know of another way to really make it work but to make sure that you start with having a strong relationship trust and being comfortable with saying hey that's not where we fit um, you know this is where we fit and can help you and here's the gaps that you may need to find another solution to help with so how much of the business is channel sales and how much is it more direct to customers? We're, we are primarily a channel focused business. Um, that's really where we have uh, focused our efforts has been selling um, our through MSPs who are able to essentially be able to monetize themselves with a configuration change detection and response and help their customers, as I said, really understand uh, that cyber posture and where they are specifically to the controls that are in cyber insurance, um, because that is what they're highly dependent upon um, to get paid should a breach ever happen. And covering them is, uh, again, probably one of the most important things that we can do for a, for a customer and for our MSPs. So how how does that relationship evolve? Because I would imagine the technology is moving so fast, so you're constantly um, uh, educating, but also you've got to be, you know, have an eye on the bottom as well that, you know, you need to pull th people through as quickly as possible. So how do you balance all, all of that to make sure your standards are really high and you're selling to the right customer? Well, I think, it, it starts with understanding your ideal customer profile to go into. Um, you know, uh, you can't be all things to all people. Um, so really understanding for us, we know that MSPs that have more than 20 managed customers is a really um, the, the floor of where we can start. We become very powerful for companies that have, you know, over 50 managed customers. So for us, again, understanding where we play best uh, is the starting point. And then secondarily, making sure that you're not just um, selling to one person within an organization. Um, our value proposition runs across uh, finance, um, uh, as well as IT, the uh, network operations center, the security operations center, service delivery, all of those pieces, and making sure that we're talking to all those folks uh, along the journey, because Sales don't happen generally with one person anymore. It's, it's about cons driving consensus uh, and also showing them you continue. If you're only talking to one person, you're only getting to show a small piece of the value to the, to the customer. So for us, um, it's about how do we go much wider uh, as well as deeper in our relationships. And some of that is in figuring out the communication flow of the customer that the customer and the MSP really want. Um, some of them want their quarterly business reviews, or they want a monthly touch point, and or they want a newsletter, uh, or text messages, or emails, and uh, to give them. And we're also seeing a lot of need and want for in-app um, uh, notifications of, of our partners and our customers so that they actually can see what's changing uh, for, for them in our solution. And so we've, we've moved to do that as well. Right, right. So talk to me about enhanced security posture. What do you mean by that? Yeah, so security posture is really the ability to say, how secure are you? What, what level of risk might you have? And there are controls um, that map to different frameworks, whether that's NIST or CIS, and, um, and cyber, the cyber insurance controls are sort of a subset of of those frameworks. Um, and so what we've cho chosen to do is be able to map very closely to what the cyber insurance actuaries basically say, here are the largest areas of risk, MFA, email security, endpoint security, network security. Here are the things that you have to have in place 
in order to know that you are going to be eligible first to get cyber insurance and secondarily be able to be paid out should you ever have a breach. Um, so we've mapped those levels of goals um, to give you a, a very easy way to see where you are on each of those controls. Oh, only two of your 20 users are actually um, have MFA enabled. Uh, you're likely not going to be eligible for cyber insurance. Let's get that fixed. Um, so being able to visualize that and enable MSPs to have uh, crucial conversations uh, around where their customers are, that also helps them additional services in, that helps to make them more secure. That's all part of uh, our value proposition to our MSP partners. I think that's really interesting that your your starting point is looking at the legislation mm -hmm. and actually matching your product to that so that you know what companies should have and so that then you're able to know where they're falling down and where their breaches are, where they're not going to get insurance and actually educating that it seems to be that's that must be a much easier sell because you've got a benchmark, you've reached it that your customers haven't. Right. And that's so again, it's 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 about making it easy to understand. I one of the things as a CEO that becomes very frustrating to me is when there's all of these things that we need to all of these different policies that you have to adhere to. Well, how do I know that that's actually happening? So LionGuard helps from an executive level to be able to say, hey, look, when I do an attestation that we're doing these things, I can actually see visually that this is actually, in fact, what's happening. Um, so uh, to me, I think it's very compelling. I, I hope my partners and customers feel that way as well. Yeah, yeah, love it, love it. So I'm interested in how you got into this space, really. What was your journey? Yeah, so I, I started uh, when I was, I, I think I was about 20, 21 years old uh, in the technology space. Uh, for a small startup that got acquired by CA Technologies. I grew up in that organization over 17 years, sales, marketing, operation, um, went on to go become CMO of another startup um, uh, that I then wound up growing from COO into CRO and president, and then ultimately took the leap into being a CEO at an MSP, a very large MSP, um, that rolled up a number of smaller MSPs. So got to be on the other side of the equation from being a vendor to actually being who was being sold to, mm -hmm. um, which was an awesome experience from the perspective of really learning uh, how how hard it is to be in the seat of, of, uh, of a managed service provider and providing great service while being profitable um, and driving that profitability, which is how MSPs are valued. So it was a great learning experience for me to then take back in to the vendor space and the software side, which I'm so very passionate about, um, and make sure that we're serving that value proposition. Uh, because I think oftentimes vendors think that they're, you know, <laughs> you know, everything's a, a, if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Like, you know, ultimately, the really understanding the customer, the personas, what do they care about, what's driving them, and building a product and the value proposition and pricing and packaging in such a way it's easily consumable. Um, bringing that into LineGuard has been a really fun experience so far. So with your um, uh, change of role, has there been a change in mindset or there's key things that you've had to upskill now that you're you know sitting in the main seat the biggest pressure the ceo you know moving through the ranks from 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 sales what well, is the kind of key thing for you that it's kind of a real change in in what you do in your mindset well it's always learning first of all there's i, I don't say that i have everything figured out by any means um but i think it's under profitability at a different level uh when you're a salesperson you're you're driving towards that revenue and you may not understand uh, at least for me in the earlier part of my career i didn't realize the importance of the structure of the deal and making sure it was good not just for me but for the company um, and so really helping to um, enlighten my sales organization around those things is really important like there are good deals and then there are deals that are that, that 
are maybe not the right deals to, to bring to, to the business and helping people understand what those parameters might be and what profitable uh, revenue really looks like. That's really interesting. So how are you able to do that within your organization? Having been a salesperson where you may not actually have that profitability, a sense of the profitability and to where you are now, where it's absolutely essential. How do you make sure that you, you know, that there's got to be some bend within the parameters. Um, so how do you make sure that you maintain a standard and you have parameters, but that you've got flexibility in it as well? Yeah, so for me, ultimately, it is about setting the parameters appropriately in the beginning um, and explaining what why the floors or floors are, what are the things that mean more at a different stage of a company? Hey, cash might be more king at this stage than um, at another. So, hey, maybe pushing a deal to be totally upfront versus monthly um, or uh, or potentially um, being able to say, hey, we're willing to, to take a margin hit on this particular deal if we get more volume. Um, so helping our 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 employees, our salespeople know what those levers are and where the floors on those levers are and, uh, is, is a big piece of it. So it's a lot of training. It's a lot of continuous conversation that are in flow um, to make sure that we're moving towards where the customer is too around what's, uh, you know, budgets are all squeezed today. So, um, you know, how do you, we, we really focus a lot on thinking about things both from the framework, but also taking an individualistic approach of how can we help to make sure we win a deal and make it a win-win for everyone. Um, and mm -hmm. it's not an it's not an easy answer of saying, hey, there's you know something uh, it's some silver bullet here. Ultimately, it's really about good communication and staying uh, staying on top of you know week by week as we're forecasting and uh, month by month and quarter over quarter and and looking for the opportunities to always be improving our parameters and, and the levers that we can pull. Michelle, it sounds like you're you're having had the background you have and the, the breadth of knowledge and experience that you're you're co you're close to still very close to your your sales uh, uh, a function in the organisation as CEO should be. But I wonder if you're the sales leader's nightmare because you're constantly picking them up, asking you know the the questions. Well, you'll have or, to You'll have to ask my uh, chief sales officer, Jason Macias. I try not to be. Uh, ultimately, you know, obviously I have my own philosophy, but in the recruiting process of bringing in a chief sales officer, um, try to find someone who who shared some of that philosophy and also has some other great um, skills that come to come to bear. I I, um, I think the more evangelists we can have. Uh, and the more coaches that we can have for our sales. I mean, you think about a football team, right? There's not just the head coach. Uh, there are the other coaches that are there watching in each of these different positions. And Jason and I sort of like to operate in that way. But um, but you'll have to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great because we often speak to CEOs that um, they've never had any sales experience. And for, for, I'm sure for me and you, I think that the sales operation is the engine, the core to every business growth and, you know, the customer experience, all of that. I think um, marketing comes on under sales, whereas marketing might think the other way around. But, you know, like revenue generating as an organization, it should be the primary focus without losing sight of mind. The customer is king in terms of every decision you make has to be for either your channel partners or your customers because ultimately that is your your revenue stream i don't know what your view is about the relationship between customer customer experience customer centricity and sales yeah so i think obviously the more customer centric you can be and that also relates to things like product led growth um, uh, making sure that you're building your product in such a way that it's meeting the customer de future demand, that it's got some visionary capabilities um, uh, to 
to pull in and, and make it easier for the salesperson. Because if you have a product that isn't, isn't recognized as solving a customer problem, it's going to be really hard to, and um, uh, so, so that's, I think a critical part is being customer centric and really, again, understanding those pain points. Um, I think it's really hard to be a salesperson if you, uh, for a product, if you don't understand what's the driver, why would a person really buy this? Um, and to think really critically about that, um, and, and also help to educate your marketing. I, I've seen in my past, not here at Lion Guard, but in, in my past, you know, I've seen marketing organizations that are, um, that haven't had that customer centricity um, and that they create messaging that just doesn't meet the customer demand. And then sales is like, hey, this isn't helpful. So the better that you can do it at aligning the organization, the marketing message, the sales message, the product, all together around customer centricity and around what are the different persona pain points, the better and more successful uh, company will be. So what are you doing in Line Guard to um, ensure that your sales organization, revenue generating, uh, has developed the buyer and customer centricity? Uh, well, first and foremost, Line Guard was founded by a former MSP. Um, so uh, coming from the shoes of the uh, uh, of being in that um, has that in our DNA. Um, certainly, me having been an MSP, so being it's helpful that we're we, we come from that starting point. But then we have a partner advisory council. We have an in-app way of um, asking for feedback, um, and we're just very active in our community um, to make sure that we're getting sites. Uh, and making sure that we're taking some actions and when we release our roadmaps, being able to talk to them in a way that, hey, this solves these customer needs that you've spoken to us about. Um, and also being able to say, hey, this is what we can't do right now. Um, uh, and getting we're, we're getting better at being able to say, look, this is where, where we are and where we're going. Um, so I think that's that's one of the things that LionGuard does really frankly, well, is communicate to our customers and our partner community. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Michelle. So what one tried and tested strategy would you offer listeners on how to their sales? Well, first and foremost, I think it's, it is go and listen to your customers and figure out who your, your ideal customer profile is um, based on looking at the data and what as you get that segmentation uh go reach out to those customers ask them why they bought um uh, and then be able to see where that the patterns emerge around that to help build your strategy um but i think that that's the a, a, the best thing you can do to get started i love that you said it's exactly what what we do in order to help organizations scale themselves it's very much from you know, customer retention, existing customers, listening to them, you speak in their language, and really understanding why they brought from you. And they become your advocates for the, the whole organization, the closer you stay to them. And a great sales force recommending other people shorter sales cycle is brilliant. So I, I, I love that. So Michelle, I'm gonna switch it up a, a bit. And Ash, if you're on a desert island on your own, what's the one thing you would take with you? Um, my husband, so I wouldn't be alone. <laughs> <laughs> Does he know he's coming? He's on the <laughs> desert island. <laughs> yeah, I think he would welcome coming because we have uh, six kids. So oh, right. uh, both, if we could both get away from the kids on a on a deserted island would be a wonderful thing. So I'm giving you your ideal <laughs> hometown. You are. You are. <laughs> Some people say I, the first thing they, they want to do is a boat, some of the island, whereas you and your <laughs> husband would happily, you know, stay there for a bit of peace and quiet. Fantastic. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Okay, Michelle, how can listeners get hold of you? Sure. So feel free to reach out uh, to me at michelle.accardi, which is A-C-C-A-R-D-I, at lionguard.com, and lionguard's L-I-O-N-G-A-R-D. Fantastic. It's been an absolute star. Love what everything that you've you've said. Thank you so much, Miss Jell, for being a guest on Scale Your Sales podcast. 
Thanks so much, Janice. I, I really appreciate it as well. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Scale Your Sales podcast. If you like this discussion, feel free to listen to other episodes or watch the caption show on YouTube and subscribe to future episodes. I would really appreciate it if you would leave a positive review on iTunes. Thank you.